Hi friends, I'm Dr. Jennifer Jacqueline, your DOOM teacher. Today's topic is about hyoid bone. So this topic is important for your undergraduates and postgraduates. For undergraduates, it might be asked in your brief answers, 6 marks, 5 marks, 3 marks, even in your MCQs. Postgraduates is very important. Why? Because when you've been given a sample, you'll be asked to dissect the hyoid bone and you'll have to be in a position to observe or know what to observe in a hyoid bone so that ultimately you'll be able to give an opinion based on whatever you're observing, right? So let's get into the topic. Just let us see a little bit of anatomy. Hyoid bone shape is U-shaped. It's present in the front of the neck at the level of C3 vertebra, right? And next, let us see the parts. For us, parts of the hyoid bone is very important. So this one is greater cornua, lesser cornua and the body. Right? There are three parts. So you can see here I have a hyoid bone. So this longer one is the greater cornua which comes down and again there is a small projection which is a lesser cornua and a broad one down or in the middle is the body, right? So this you should not make a mistake because most or some of the students just label it as greater tubercle, greater epicondyle. So it is greater cornua, right? And this hyoid bone has two surfaces. One is posterior surface and then is the anterior surface. Anterior is the front part, right? And this one, a separate picture of the body, it looks like a rectangle or a quadrilateral shape and in the body if you observe there will be two ridges present this is the upper part of the body this is the lower part of the body okay so the upper part has a transverse ridge like this and the lower part has a median vertical ridge okay so this one is a transverse ridge. So these are the two ridges present at the body of the hyoid bone. And if you see this hyoid bone is present in the front of the neck without attachments to any bone, it's just holded upon by muscles and ligaments, especially an important ligament which is stylohyoid ligament. So this holds most of the part of this hyoid bone, right? So now, what is the importance of this hyoid bone as forensic medicine? What does it do or how does it help us? First one is it helps to estimate the age of an individual, right? With the help of ossification centers. So when someone asks you, how can you estimate the age of a person when you have a bone? You have to be very clear. You will estimate with the help of ossification centers right so this hyoid bone has few number of ossification centers so the number is six there are six ossification centers present in the hyoid bone so this six ossification centers is being distributed based on the parts so we saw there are three parts right so it is being divided into two 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 for the greater cornua two for the body two for the lesser cornua right so the greater cornua when does it appear you should know so appearance you should know fusion you should know so the greater cornua appears in intrauterine life that is 10th week of intrauterine life whereas the body appears after the birth or at birth the lesser cornua appears at puberty right so this greater cornua alone will fuse at 20 to 30 years. Okay. And the greater cornua along with the body fuses at 40 years. And the lesser cornua fuses at 16 years. So each part fuses at a particular age. So this fusion means nothing but union. 
so when we have been given a hyoid bone to estimate for example we'll try to estimate the age or how can we observe the age with a particular hyoid bone so fusion is also called as union i said when we see grossly a bone if you want to see whether it's fused or not you just check the mobility right so you have to check for the mobility whether it is being ossified or fused right so this greater convoy if you see you check it's very rigid and fixed that means it is fused so it has passed 20 to 30 years right and the next one you come down this is the lesser convoy okay this also if you check for the mobility it is fixed so it has passed 16 years and next i told you this greater convoy fuses with the body at 40 years so if suppose an individual is less than 40 years if you check here at the junction of the greater cornua and the body it will be fully flexible and mobile it will not be as fixed as this hyoid bone if you are able to see this type of hyoid bone this is an individual who is more than 40 years right so i hope you will not have a doubt of it so next we will see about the types of fractures okay types of fractures so the first one is inward outward inward outward let me draw a diagram of the hyoid bone and tell you how we can see whether it's so this hyoid bone is covered or will be covered by a layer of periosteum which is which will be very close to the bone right so in an inward compression fracture this greater cornua this piece of fragment the greater cornua will be displaced medially okay it will bend medially and this periosteum will be torn here there will be a tear and this will get fractured medially so the fragment is displaced medially and the periosteum is torn outward in an inward compression fracture so when does it happen so this hyoid bone is present in the front of the neck suppose someone tries to throttle me or someone tries to compress my neck like this automatically my hand compresses inwards so that time there is a possibility of a inward compression fracture so if they ask you when does an inward compression fracture occurs or in what case you'll have to say it will be most common occurring in throttling right if this inward fracture is also called as lateral compression fracture because you're compressing over the lateral surface right so it is also called as lateral compression fracture and the next one is outward outward it's just the opposite this part will be going outside displaced laterally this fragment and the periosteum will be torn in the inner part so when does this outward compression fracture occurs so when a person tries to hang himself there will be this hyoid bone moving backwards okay there will be a suspension so there will be a backward movement of this hyoid bone rather than an inward compression so that's why this fragment gets displaced laterally so when you've been asked when an outward compression occurs it's more commonly in hanging or a ligature strangulation ligature strangulation is nothing but suppose a person is trying to strangulate you with her shawl or any towel from a back so he tries to pull you backwards so that time this outward compression fracture occurs right so there are other scenarios also where a hyoid bone fracture can occur that may be in an rta a runover or suppose two friends are very aggressively fighting and they don't like each other and they're just giving a direct blow to the neck okay direct blow to the neck so in 
both the scenarios there may be multiple fractures the fracture of the hyoid bone can be into many pieces so if you see this picture this is a posterior surface this is the left side this is the right side so when you're being given a hyoid bone when you're taking it from a sample box first keep it in anatomy first the anterior surface in front then only you will be able to say whether which is the right side which is the left side so this is the posterior surface because posterior surface will be like a cup okay whereas the anterior surface will be looking elevated so you see this one the fragment is displaced medially and there is a periosteal bleeding this is an example of inward compression fracture okay and there is another type of fracture which is called as avulsion fracture third one avulsion fracture so this type is not either due to hanging or not due to any throttling it is mainly because of muscle over activity okay see this hyoid will be there and the thyroid will be there suppose if there is a traction okay if there is a traction in between this hyoid and thyroid this hyoid will pop off just pulls out and it gets fractured so avulsion fracture occurs especially during a muscle over activity this avulsion fracture is also called as tug fracture there are few tests to observe these fractures one is a palpatory method by the name suggests you keep a hand with your index and the thumb finger over the front of the neck observe whether any displacement you are able to feel some displacement of the fragments right and the next test is tolvidin test tolvidin test plus stereo microscopy okay what you do is you drop this tolvidin blue in a particular fracture site and leave it for some 15 seconds and the fractured site turns blue and that will be observed in a stereo microscopy so why this test is important is the bleeding site the micro bleeding will be made out by this tolvidin blue and the third test is semi micro radiography semi micro radiography so this is nothing but you will be same as that of stereo microscopy even the minute fractures will be made out with the semi micro radiography right and the fourth one is x ray and ct ideally it's advised that before subjecting the body for autopsy you supposed to take an x ray so that we'll be able to know that a particular finding is present or at least try to preserve a thyrohyoid complex and then do a radiograph and then you will be able to observe so the last part is medico legal importance first it helps to identify the person right because we we are almost approximately estimating the age indirectly age of the person and next is cause of death because by knowing which type of fracture we'll be able to say how that is possible or in which case it's possible so these are the few points which are important when it is related to forensic medicine so if you feel this is useful for you please circulate to your friends so that it will help them right so i'll meet you all in the next video let's have a happy learning